The Bible presents us with many precious promises, and today I want to highlight four of them that reveal the power of God's guiding hand in our lives. We need to understand that being led by God is not just an additional benefit for a Christian. It is an essential and non-negotiable necessity. All of us, without exception, need divine guidance to make wise decisions and live according to the purpose He has prepared for each of us. When we are not guided by God's hand and do not allow His word to govern our thoughts and actions, we inevitably end up being directed by less noble influences. In the absence of divine guidance, one of three elements will take control. The system of the world with its vanities and corrupted values. The flesh, which represents our fallen human nature, always inclined to selfishness and rebellion. Or the enemy, Satan, who takes advantage of our vulnerability to distance us from God's plan. Therefore, seeking the Lord's guidance should be a continuous and sincere pursuit based on constant prayer and studying the scriptures. Prayer opens our hearts and minds to hear God's voice, while His Word reveals the truth and principles that should govern our daily walk. In this way, we avoid being led by the distractions and pitfalls the world offers. We strengthen our spirit against the temptations of the flesh, and we keep ourselves protected from evil attacks. The scriptures teach us clearly that we are not alone in life's journey. God is actively involved in guiding every step of those who seek Him and live righteously. Three biblical passages rich in wisdom reinforce this truth, revealing the immense care and sovereignty of the Lord in our daily walk. In Psalm 37, 23-24, we find a promise that brings comfort and hope. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though they may stumble, they will not fall, for the Lord upholds them with his hand. Even when we face difficulties or stumble, God does not abandon us. He not only observes from afar, but supports our hand, preventing us from falling definitively. This shows that stumbling is part of the human journey, but failing and remaining prostrate is not the destiny of those who trust in the Lord. God's grace lifts us, renews us, and keeps us standing because He delights in taking care of every aspect of our lives. Moreover, Proverbs 16, 9 says, In their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Although we make plans and have goals, it is God who has the final word on our paths. He is sovereign and knows what is best for us, even when we do not immediately understand His ways. Often our plans do not unfold as we expect, but we must trust that the Lord is guiding every detail for our good and for the fulfillment of His purpose. The text of Proverbs 20:24 20, complements this truth. A person's steps are directed by the Lord, how then can anyone understand their own way? Even when we cannot fully understand the direction God gives us, He is still in control. The path that the Lord lays out is not always clear to us, but we can rest assured that He knows exactly where He is leading us. Our human limitations should not prevent our trust, for God sees the complete picture of our life. These texts encourage us to live with quiet confidence, knowing that the Lord is involved in the daily details of our life. This calls us to a continuous exercise of submission and trust. Planning is important, but it is crucial to leave space for divine intervention and accept that God may redirect our steps. Sometimes He leads us down unexpected paths, not to frustrate us, but to bring us to a better destination than we could have imagined. The journey of life often presents us with important decisions and uncertain paths. In the face of these crossroads, true wisdom is to seek God's direction, the questioning of the human heart. 
How then can anyone understand their own way? Proverbs 20.24 20, Reflects our limitation in fully comprehending divine plans. It is at this point that we need to learn to depend on the Lord and trust in His guidance. Psalm 119 105 offers a precious key to walking securely. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Without the word of God, we are at the mercy of the darkness of uncertainty. The image of a lamp for the feet and a light for the path shows us that divine guidance is both immediate and ongoing. The lamp illuminates the immediate step, revealing the next safe step, while the light for the path brings clarity to the journey ahead. This reminds us that the Word of God not only helps us make decisions in the present, but also keeps us on the right course throughout our lives. Seeking the Lord's direction, as emphasized in this psalm, involves a constant and intentional practice. Before making decisions, especially those involving significant changes, we should pause pray and consult the Lord. The essential question should be, Lord, is this what you want for me? Is this the direction you are calling me to follow? These questions reveal a heart submissive to God's will and willing to be guided by him. We do not always hear an audible voice or receive a clear response from God when seeking his guidance. However, the Lord has many ways of communicating with us. One of the most subtle and precious forms of divine confirmation is the peace he places in our hearts. Often when something aligns with God's will, we feel an inner peace that transcends circumstances and human understanding. This peace is a sign that we can move forward with confidence, knowing that we are aligned with the Lord's direction. The Apostle Paul in Philippians 4.7 speaks about this supernatural peace and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we seek divine direction in prayer and find this peace, it is as if God is saying, I am with you, continue. I am guiding your steps. This peace is not the absence of challenges or uncertainties, but a sense of security amid circumstances. On the other hand, when a decision is misaligned with God's will, we often experience restlessness and discomfort in our spirit, a sign that we should stop, pray more, and seek new direction. Being sensitive to God's voice requires practice and an intimate relationship with Him. Prayer is the key to developing this spiritual sensitivity. It is not just about talking to God, but learning to listen to his voice, whether through the Bible, the peace in the heart, or even circumstances that he uses to guide us. So as you listen and reflect for the next few moments, pray that your heart will be open and attentive to divine direction. Pray that seeking God becomes your first instinct whenever a decision presents itself whether big or small, when our first reaction is to consult the Lord, we avoid acting on impulse or being guided by our own emotions. This frees us from the anxiety of walking unknown paths and preserves us from mistakes that could have been avoided. Remember, seeking God is an act of dependence and wisdom, demonstrating that we trust more in his wisdom than in our own. When we fail to seek divine direction, we run the risk of walking in darkness, disoriented and vulnerable to the misleading influences of the world, the flesh and the enemy. Jesus taught us in John 8.12 that he is the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Without Christ's guidance, we are subject to taking paths not prepared for us. But when we allow God to guide our steps, we live in peace and purpose. 
knowing that we are walking in the light. We must never forget that Jesus Christ is the light of our lives. He not only illuminates our steps, but also reveals the path we should follow, even in the darkest and most uncertain moments. In John 8.12, Jesus declares, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This light is a living promise that with Jesus by our side, we will never be lost or without direction. He leads us with love and security through uncertainties and points us to the path we should follow to experience true life in abundance. Faith is the essential element for walking in this light. Having faith means believing that God is faithful and that he will honor his word at the right time, especially in times of greatest need. Faith is not based only on what we see or feel, but on the certainty that God acts in our favor even when we do not understand his ways. As scripture says in Hebrews 11, one, now faith is confidence in what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. Having faith means fully trusting in the Almighty God and believing that He is capable of intervening in all circumstances of our life. It is recognizing that, regardless of the difficulties, He will never abandon us and will come to our aid at the right time. This confidence allows us to rest in God's sovereignty, knowing that his timing is perfect, even when our limited vision makes us question. Faith, however, is not a static concept. It grows, refines, and strengthens through trials. Difficulties are not signs of abandonment, but opportunities that God uses to shape and mature our trust in him. In times of tribulation, our faith is purified like gold in the fire. 1 Peter 1, 6, Sestus 7. As we learn to depend more on the Lord, we discover that he is faithful and sustains us in every situation. Jesus Christ, as the light guiding us, calls us to walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Instead of despairing in the face of adverse circumstances, we are invited to see them as opportunities to experience God's care and power in new dimensions. It is in these moments that faith becomes more defined and clear, for we learn that God is sufficient and that his grace is enough for us. Having faith does not mean possessing a gigantic and unshakable confidence at all times. Jesus teaches us that we do not need huge faith to see miracles happen, just a small but true faith. In Matthew 17:20, he says, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. The mustard seed is known for being one of the smallest seeds, but when planted, it grows and becomes one of the largest herbs. Jesus used this analogy to teach us that the power of faith is not in its size, but in its authenticity and in the God in whom we trust. Even a small faith, when placed in the hands of God, is enough to move mountains, not by our strength, but by the power of God, acting in response to our trust in him. So do not be afraid or feel discouraged. If your faith seems small or fragile, God does not require us to have gigantic faith to accomplish great things. He simply asks that we trust him with what we have. If today you feel that your faith is inadequate, remember these two fundamental truths. Faith grows as you walk with God. Faith is like a muscle. It strengthens as it is exercised. Each time you trust God in the midst of adversity, your faith is refined and increased. It is in the small acts of daily trust, praying for a need, following God's direction even without seeing the complete path, and patiently waiting for his timing, that your faith becomes stronger and more resilient. 
Spiritual growth is a continuous process, and God rejoices with each step of faith you take, no matter how small. God works, even with imperfect faith. God does not demand perfection from us. He knows our limitations. In moments of weakness, he is ready to help us believe, as he did with the desperate father who cried out to Jesus, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Mark 9:24. Even when our faith is imperfect, God's power is not limited. He is faithful to act and accomplish the impossible in our lives, not because our faith is large, but because he is great. The only requirement Jesus has is that we have faith the size of a mustard seed and that our eyes remain fixed on him in all life situations. The Christian walk is a continuous exercise in trust, from the moment we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior to each decision and challenge we face. Receiving Christ is the first act of faith that all of us experience, the beginning of a spiritual journey with God. This means that, regardless of who we are, we all receive a measure of faith to start. However, the development of that faith does not happen automatically. The growth of faith is a personal responsibility. It is a partnership between us and God, in which he provides the tools and opportunities to grow, but it is up to us to choose to use them diligently. Romans 10.17 reveals the main source for strengthening faith. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of God the role of God's Word. In the growth of faith, the Bible is the spiritual food that sustains and strengthens our faith. Every time we read or hear the Word of God, our minds and hearts are renewed with His promises and truths. Knowledge of the Word helps us trust more in God, even in adversity, for we learn that He is faithful and fulfills what He promises. Without this constant exposure to the Word, our faith can weaken and be easily shaken by the circumstances around us. Just as the mustard seed needs to be planted and nourished to grow, faith needs to be cultivated daily through reading the Bible, praying, and fellowship with other Christians. When we feed on the Word of God, our confidence in Him becomes more solid and we learn to discern His voice, even in difficult times. This growth does not happen overnight, but it is a continuous process that involves dedication and perseverance, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Another essential key to strengthening faith is keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. When we focus on Christ, our circumstances lose the power to scare us or divert our path. Peter experienced this practically. While walking on the water, he began to sink the moment he took his eyes off Jesus and focused on the storm. Matthew 14, 28, 31. This story reminds us that faith grows and remains firm when we look to Jesus and not the difficulties. The Christian life requires us to practice this trust day after day, especially when we face challenges that seem bigger than us. Faith is not the absence of fear, but is the decision to trust in God despite the fear. And as we do this, our confidence strengthens and our faith becomes more robust, like the tree that grows from a small seed. Faith grows in practice and perseverance. Just like any skill that develops with practice, faith grows when we put it into action. This means trusting God not only in big decisions, but also in the small daily choices. Each act of obedience, each prayer made with confidence, each step taken in the direction God indicates, contributes to the growth of our faith. And as we experience God's faithfulness, our trust in Him deepens, and we become more courageous to trust His direction in future situations. Just as the physical body needs food to stay healthy and strong, our faith needs to be nourished by the Word of God. In times of difficulties, challenges, 
or trials, it is the Word of God that sustains, strengthens, and renews our confidence, regardless of the depth of the waters or the size of the giants we face. The word of the Lord is sufficient to give us strength and hope to keep walking. Faith does not grow in a vacuum, but is continually fed by meditating on God's promises. In times of crisis or uncertainty, the word of God becomes the anchor of our soul. Hebrews 6.19 Preventing us from shipwrecking in doubt or despair. It reminds us of who God is, what he has already done, and what he promises to do in our lives. In 1 John 5, 5, we find a powerful statement about the victory we have through faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This verse reveals an essential truth. The victory over difficulties, temptations and challenges of the world is linked to our faith in Jesus Christ. We do not overcome based on our strength or abilities, but because we believe in the Son of God and stand firm in Him. Faith in Jesus gives us the assurance that, regardless of the magnitude of the challenges, the victory is already ours through Him. When the waters seem deep and the struggles seem greater than we can bear, the Word of God offers perspective and hope. It reminds us that, God is greater than any adversity, and that, with him, we are more than conquerors. Romans 8.37 Faith, nourished by the word, allows us to look beyond the circumstances and see that God's hand is working in our favor, even when we do not see an immediate way out. Just as David faced the giant Goliath with courage, trusting not in his own strength, but in the word, and promise of God, 1 Samuel 17, 45, 47. We too can face the giants in our life. The word gives us boldness to declare, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty, Zechariah 4, 6. True victory does not depend on the size of the problem, but on the size of our trust in God. Therefore, no matter what your situation is today, whether the waters seem deep or the enemy seems strong, stand firm in the word of the Lord. The word of God is living and active, Hebrews 4.12, and encourages us to maintain faith even when everything seems against us. It is a constant source of hope and renewal. When we meditate on the word, our minds are renewed and our hearts are replenished with confidence in the God who never fails. Our faith must be firmly grounded in Jesus Christ, the one in whom all power and authority reside. Have faith in the one who speaks and the windows of heaven obey, in the one who creates just by his word, in the one whose breath gives eternal life, and in the one who broke the power of death, rising in victory. Jesus is our source of hope and trust, for there is no situation so great or impossible that he cannot transform. When we place our faith in him, we find strength to face life's storms and rest amidst uncertainties. Having faith in Jesus is recognizing that he is sufficient, powerful, and always present, regardless of the circumstances. In Isaiah 41, 10, 10, the Lord gives us a guarantee full of love and comfort. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This promise is a precious reminder that we are not alone. The very God, creator of the universe, commits to being by our side. He not only accompanies us, but also strengthens, helps, and sustains us with his unfailing justice. With this word in mind, we can face the future with courage, certain that he will never abandon us. From the beginning, the word of God has the power to create and transform. Genesis 1 shows us 
that God created everything by the power of his word. And the same Jesus who created the world is the one who brings a new life to those who are weary and burdened. When we believe in him, we experience the power of a new creation in our lives, a transformation from within that only Christ can make. Moreover, Jesus overcame death, and this gives us an unshakable certainty. No situation is final and no problem is too big for him to solve. The one who rose and defeated death is also capable of bringing life and restoration to any area of our lives that is wounded or hopeless. The promise of Isaiah 41 10 is an invitation to live without fear and without anxiety. God does not just give us commands not to fear. He offers his own presence as the basis for our confidence. Do not fear, for I am with you. Knowing that God is by our side frees us from the paralysis of fear and gives us the courage to face daily challenges. He is not only present, but strengthens and sustains us, ensuring that we will never be left alone to struggle with our own strength. This promise is an anchor for the soul in difficult times and reminds us that the Almighty God cares for us and keeps us firm in His justice. True faith in Jesus provides us with peace and confidence. Even though the world around us changes and storms arise on our path, we can rest assured that God is for us. His creative power, His victory over death, and His promise to always be with us give us strength to walk with courage knowing that nothing can separate us from his love. Romans 8, 38, 39 Dear listener, place your faith in Jesus Christ. He is the one who not only has power over creation, but also knows every detail of your life and is ready to help you. In every situation, remember that you can trust him. His word is true and his promises never fail. Rest in the assurance of Isaiah 41.10 God is with you. He will strengthen you and sustain you. No matter what you are facing, Jesus is faithful to help you and lead you to victory.